So let's talk about the different locations where SMRAM could reside. So we saw that SMBase can be overwritten by the SMI handler via rewriting the save state, and then it is a 32-bit value only, so it can only exist somewhere inside of the 4 gigabyte physical address range. Now typically on modern systems, SMRAM is relocated at least once. So it'll start out at SMBase of hex 30,000, but then it'll move around for reasons we'll see a little bit later. That would look something like this. Let's say that we have the BIOS here and it's executing some code from RAM. So the BIOS may start up in the spy flash chip, but at some point it's going to copy the code off to RAM. So it takes and it copies the code that it would like to have be the initial SMRAM code down to physical address hex 30,000. And if you caught it, that was Dark Sonic following along as to be the code that's running in SMM later on. The BIOS will also create a copy of the actual SMRAM where they're gonna want it later somewhere else. Then they're going to cause a system management interrupt, which will vector to here, this code right here. And then now it's in SMM. Now I didn't actually uh, create this particular picture when I was just you know searching through my Miss Frizzle pictures before. Someone else created this erased face thing and I just thought it you know, looked interesting and I actually found this before I found the non-erased faced version. But this is a perfect you know, representation of the code executing in SMM. It's in a dark place, it's faceless because you can't see it for reasons we'll see later. So yeah, that's SMM. What does SMM do? What does this first initial relocating SMRAM do? Well, it starts at 3800, so the IP is 8000, the base is 30000. So the entry point is there at 38,000. I think I said 3,800, 38,000. And what it's going to do is it's going to take this saved area where the save state from before SMM was running, and it's going to rewrite that with a new SM base for the location of the actual later on SMRAM. So you can see this code can be pretty simple. This just has to be a pretty simple stub that just kind of smashes SM base with some correct value that the BIOS actually wants the SM RAM to live at. And then after that, it can just resume. And boom, like that, you're back in BIOS. So now that you've resumed from SMM, SM base has been updated with whatever value was saved there before, X123000. And the actual Dark Sonic, the actual code that's going to run in SM RAM is going to be here. So the next time there's a system management interrupt, SMBase is going to be 123000, and this is the code that's actually going to run. All right, Intel defines a few locations for SMRAM, and this guidance is basically trying to accommodate a few things. One, it's trying to make it easier for BIOS developers to just know, hey, you should probably put it there. Two, it's trying to avoid SMRAM overlapping with other stuff. And three, there are hardware mechanisms put in place to protect SMRAM, and if you want to use those mechanisms, if you're trying to do something actually that requires restriction, then you should abide by Intel's recommendations in order to get that protection. And so this is all just, you know, another part of the BIOS's job of building up a memory map. Now, older documentation listed these three locations as possible SMRAM locations, but on modern PCH systems, there's only two options. So we'll focus on that. There's the compatible or CSEG range, and there's just the thing called TSEG where they never exactly tell you what T stands for. So we're gonna concern ourselves primarily with these, starting with CSEG and then moving on to TSEG. Well, this was our memory map Tetris from before, and we saw within that there was an SMRAM range that was listed as being at TSEG. Well, we're, that, we'll get to that, that's gonna be TSEG for later, but the CSEG is actually down here in this DOS compatible memory range. So let's drill in on that and see what's stored there. From the fourth generation CPU data sheets, we see something like this. And it's basically saying that SMM will live at a fixed area starting at physical address A and four zeros and ending at physical address B and four Fs. This is also referred to as the legacy video area. So this memory range is actually reused. If the processor is in SMM, then it can be used for system management mode code. But if the processor is not in SMM, then it will be used as the sort of legacy or DOS video memory area. And as I was Googling around because I was just, you know, curious to learn a little bit more about that, I found this good website down here 
or if you want to you know go and learn a little bit more about how DOS used that you can but for our purposes we're going to think of this A to we'll just say A to C as SMRAM so just as an FYI while we have this picture up I would just point out that this range right here F and 000 up to F and FFF this would have been the original 8086 reset vector and even on later systems like 8286 which have you know 32-bit support still if they would have changed the uh, code segment they would be sort of restricted to that range right there and note this area right here is the expansion area and that was used for option ROMs back on you know old BIOSes they would copy it into this physical address range and execute the option ROMs from there so again this is going to be the compatible or CSEG memory range for SMM where Dark Sonic is hiding behind the scenes. Now how do you enable that compatible SMRAM range? We said it could be video memory or it could be SMRAM. Well there is a register called SMRAM-C, System Management RAM Control, and this has a GS SMRAM-E global or whatever SMRAM enable and it says that if this is set to one compatible SMRAM, functions are enabled providing 128K of DRAM accessible at A, you know, starting at A0 and so going up to B, F, 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 F. And then it says once DLock is set, this bit becomes RO. So we're going to learn about DLock in a second. Now, I would just make the point that this SMRAM register uh, was located in a different location back on MCHs, so it was 00090, and then it disappeared in the documentation for the first through third generation cores, and then it reappeared magically in the fourth generation at a slightly different address, 00088, and then it has now disappeared again on the 10th generation systems. And actually, some of the beta testers pointed out that it actually does appear on the 10th generation Comet Lake systems, but then it disappears in the 10th generation Ice Lake systems. So pretty sure at this point that it compatible CSEG is actually uh, being unsupported starting from the 10th generation Ice Lake systems.